You've got to find something you're passionate about the problem. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the key. Being passionate about the problem. Hey guys, Nathan Chan here, CEO of Founder Magazine. And we're back again today for another epic vlog episode. With a little bit of context, we flew down our top three students from one of our courses, Start and Scale Your Online Store. So we ran this competition and whoever could grow their business the fastest, we chose our top three students and we flew them down to Melbourne. This was like about a year ago or so. One of the biggest questions that I get asked at Founder is, how did you grow this brand so fast? You know, I have no experience. I come from an IT support background and I definitely don't want to be tooting my own horn, but people always ask like, Nathan, how did you build Founder in the space of a few years to be a, like a reasonably well-known brand in the entrepreneurial space? So I actually, detail this in this unique kind of intimate presentation with Brandon, Justin, Gamal, and also Shannon. And we actually captured that presentation. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because you know, part of these vlogs is we want to provide as much value to you guys as possible, really show contrast and behind the scenes of what it takes to build and grow a successful business. Yeah, guys, we're just going to jump right in. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on how we've built the founder brand. Guys, I want to hear a lot about branding and, and how to build uh, an influential brand or a successful brand. And I said to Dave, um, you know, we've got a little bit of leverage here. I did a presentation that was extremely well received at um, Chris Ducker's event. And I basically unpacked everything that we've done to build Founder, you know, into a, into a brand that gets cut through. Like when you think about, like there are so many people that we compete for for their attention and we're quite strong on the organic and word of mouth side like you said Brandon you know it's incredible how many people just know the brand so I've basically put in here all the key fundamental things that I've learned on what it takes to build a really influential brand that gets cut through from my experience and how we've built the founder brand how we've tried to differentiate ourselves in a marketplace where there's already a Forbes, there's already an entrepreneur, there's already an Inc, there's already Gary V's, there's already Tim Ferriss's. So why should people care? Why should people consume our content? Why should people listen to anything that we put out there? Um, so you, I'm not going to go through my story. Uh, you know, I, I shared that with you guys before, but um, yeah, just quickly, I, I started to say because we're coming close to our fifth birthday. Yeah, so, but started off as a, uh, you know, you know, little side hobby passion project. I didn't know where it would go, and, um, you know, here we are today. Um, and, you know, we're doing some really, really cool game-changing things. And, you know, we started off just as a digital magazine. That's all I was focused on for, you know, literally the first couple of years while I was working my day job and just trying to build that recurring revenue in, in the business. And, uh you know, that's the first day that we launched. The first day that we launched, we made $5.50. Now, I know that's not a lot of money, but for me, that was extremely game-changing because, you know, this is my first business. I've never put anything out there. And um, what was really compelling for me was that I knew nothing about apps. I knew nothing about business. I knew nothing about entrepreneurship. I knew nothing about publishing, media, or design. So I guess, you know, you can see where I've started from. This is kind of a testament to you can build something with no knowledge or skills and, and you, know, can, you can create something of true worth and significance. Because it was only four years ago when I was working in IT support where I knew none of this stuff, but I've just just been in the trenches and just That's been going really, really deep. Uh, so this is me, as, as I said, I, I started the business on the side while I was working my nine to five job in IT support. I didn't leave straight away. I just you know built it up on the side and then eventually I left and you know, along the way, you know, I've been able to do all sorts of crazy stuff, build quite a large Instagram following, podcast, you know, top-ranked magazine. Uh, at times, you know, we get more downloads for our magazine than an entrepreneur or a fast company or, or a Forbes on the App Store. Um, so there's some really key pieces that I've thought about and distilled it down of how we've built the founder brand. So when it comes to branding, um, you know, your brand is what people say when you're not in the room. And that's that kind of stuff where, you know, you, you know, you said to me, Brand, you want to be able to wake up and, and be proud of your, what you're building. And I think, 
if you have that in mind, you should be really, really careful. Like, you know, that's, you have to treat your brand like absolute gold. Like I was talking to someone just before, um, you might know him, Mike Dillard, and he was talking about sales letters and like, you know, how that's the way to do it if you want to sell something. I said, yeah, but look, like, so, like these long form sales letters, they might work, but like, is it on brand? Like we care so much, everything that we put out, we try and be so extremely protective of how the brand is perceived. We want to do whatever we can to protect it. And when I think about the founder brand, I think about, you know, like it's, it's cool, it's funky, it's fresh. Um, you know, it's, it's speaking to people that in a way that they've never seen, you know, talking about this business kind of stuff and entrepreneurship and startups before. And, you know, I, I, I just even get scared. You know, when we do anything, I always like, if it's ever, ever anything different, I just, Check my gut and feel like this is how much I think about the brand. Anything we put out, I think, ooh, will that feel right with the brand? And that's where, you know, if you can if you can constantly constantly care and think about every single piece, any piece of collateral, anything that you put out there with your brand, that's where you start to get that cut through, where you get that word of mouth if you're creating all these exceptional things. So Another thing to think about when it comes to creating a great brand, this is Seth Godin, one of my biggest heroes, um, is making promises and keeping them. So remember I talked about to you guys last night, I said, you know, we made a promise to you that, you know, you guys would come here and put on a mastermind. We want to absolutely blow you away. That's our ethos on everything that we do. How we think to ourselves, like, how can we, you know, just absolutely exceed someone's expectations, absolutely blow them away. Not just keep a promise, but just blow them away because that's what's going to get that word of mouth. Like that's where, you know, people do hear about the brand because people are talking about the brand because it's just like, wow, I never expected that. So where you can, you know, give such a great experience and a wow moment that's worth talking about, like how we try and do with the magazine or the design of the magazine or anything, the brand or the podcast or any of the courses, you can feel that, right? You can feel it. And that's really why I would challenge you guys to think about when it comes to creating a compelling brand that has great word of mouth, that has a tremendous amount of respect that you protect like crazy, you know, you protect it. Um, great design, you know. You know, guys. I've talked about this a lot. You you have seen it. You you know that like this is a shitty website. Obviously, this is an example of a shitty website. Like, you know. <laughs> but I I'll tell you a good story. When I first started Founder and we designed the magazine, the first issue of the magazine, um, I only wanted to pay a hundred and fifty dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. I only wanted to pay a hundred fifty. Now I didn't have any money at the time. And I told you guys I spent like a couple of grand on that magazine platform and didn't have any money at the time and I only wanted to spend $150. That was my budget to produce a magazine, like the first issue of a magazine, which is ridiculous thinking back, right? And, you know, we, it took ages and we got this magazine and I got the final version and I wasn't happy with it. And I ended up finding this guy called Karan and we still work with him to this day. I even oh, went to... I even went to his wedding um, in India, and wow. um, you know, me and him actually, me and Karen actually had coffee with Seth Godin when I was in New York, and that's a whole other story I'll tell you guys about over drinks. But, anyways, long story short, um, you know, I'm, I found Karen, and I was just about to go live with the magazine, and I said to Karen, um, you know, look, like, like, uh, you know, how much do you, how much does it cost to design a magazine? And he said three hundred dollars, three hundred US dollars. I said, man that's or 400 dollars and man that's way too expensive dude i can't do it i was like maybe maybe we'll launch the first magazine and you know we might come back to you and maybe you can design the future ones and he said to me something so important around branding and design that i'll always take with me forever whatever business we build you know forever he said when it comes to building a brand if you place a strong amount of importance on an emphasis on design it will pay its weight in gold in the long run. And that couldn't be more true to this day, five years later. Everyone that knows the founder brand, they know us for impeccable design. It's cool, it's funky, it's fresh. And that's what gets us cut through. You can use design as a form of unique selling proposition. We could put out the exact same content as Entrepreneur Magazine, but use our design and our like feel, and people would like 
our stuff more. Because we live now in a day and age where great design is not, uh, you know, a novelty. It's 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 like uh, you know, it's it's expected because you know it's it's easy to get a great designer at an affordable cost. So I'd really challenge you guys when you're creating your brands, really try and push the envelope of, of what is really really highly impeccable design at every step of the process. I think that's really really served us. Uh, like and he was true. What Coran said to me. That was so true. You spend that extra couple hundred bucks here or there, pays its weight in gold. And still to this day, that's what people know the founder brand for. You know, I'm just I've got some examples of just crappy looking websites, right? But is love and money all go to for like e commerce brand? I would I would get yeah. so, so Greta is someone that lives and breathes what I'm telling you right now. Uh -huh. I would recommend an agency like a love or money, you look at the Frank brand. Were they love and money? Yep, they were love and money. I love their stuff. Yeah, Fifth Watches. Greta's really good at building great brands. And she talks about it in the course, but one thing that's impeccable is the design is on point. So if you guys can always spend that extra, I would encourage you, just for longevity, word of mouth, reputation, cut through, if someone's going to choose your product versus somebody else's, the one that has better design will always win. That's what I was just talking about with Joe. Like, I have one great designer and a whole bunch of crappy ones. I've been trying to find someone who can help me. The love of money, people have yeah. say. Love of money? Love, love and money. money. Yeah, I, I can, money I can help money. you guys find great designers at a cheap rate. That's not a problem. I go through this as well. That would be awesome. Right. So, you know, this is a great site, Copy Blogger. I think they do a great job. But it's not it's not the best example. But it's nice and clean. I like The kind of design I like is clean and minimalist. Mm -hmm. I think if you want, you don't want to go, go too fancy. That's just me, personal taste. You look at even the Hellfish bottle, clean, minimalist. You know that. You know I just found a great designer to do that. He was X ninety nine designs head of design. Oh so really? Yeah, yeah, you can find. It, it's not hard. I can show you guys how to do it. But you know, um, I, I showed this one because it was at Chris's conference. But uh, yeah, it's great. You know, it's it's a great looking site. You know, it builds trust. But you know, so coming back to it, design speaks louder than words. You know, copy is strong. We need to get better at copy. We found that's something that we're lacking. And Mike Dillard gave me some awesome ideas on how we can just boost yeah. up our copy and, and conversions and stuff. Um, but you know, design is so extremely powerful, and I think that's absolutely everything. Uh, I really, you know, um, I think the whole goal of great design is to get people to trust what it is you do. So whatever your physical product is, the goal of great design is to get people to trust what you do. And when, when anything, like, you know, when we're putting together any packaging, anything up, I think about how can we build as much trust as possible. And, you know, design, if you look at, you know, two different companies, one that has shitty design, one that has great design, you're just not going to buy from them because you don't trust them. And I think that's the, you know, one of the biggest dominoes everyone in this room has to overcomplish when we're putting out any offers, is how do you build ridiculous amounts of trust? And I believe... Just the, the longevity of great design, it just it just pays its weight in gold. All right, so that's the next piece of the puzzle is whenever you're trying to create a great brand, I think you've always got to think about how do you build trust. So here's some things that, that we do that I'm strategically getting us to do to build trust. Now, obviously, I've talked a lot about great design. I think having a great product or service goes without saying. Where you can always have case studies before and after, tremendous way to build trust. Testimonials from influencers, clients, and customers. Any kind of social proof, like have you been featured in Forbes, have you been featured in industry, like places that build reputation. And also another thing we try and do as well to build trust is the law, using the law of reciprocity. So have you guys read the book called Influence by Robert Cialdini? Fantastic book. One of my favorite all-time marketing books. Um, you know, the law of reciprocity is essentially if you, if, you, if you do something nice for somebody or help somebody in some certain way, if you ask them for something, they're more likely to say yes. So, for, you know, with Foundry, you can use this with everything that you guys are doing. Like, we put out 99% of our content is free, and we, we go to so much effort to make that content be extremely actionable, some of the best stuff out there, 
to, you know, when it comes to ask for the sale, it's just like, oh, I love these family guys, you know, like, and, it, and even still, you know, for us and our message around, you know, building a household name, entrepreneur brand, it's still like a win-win because we're helping people otherwise, you know what I mean? So, you know, a way that you guys could get cut through with your brands is with your content, just going above and beyond with your free content more than anyone would ever expect. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a really good example. So I spoke to uh, you know a start and scale student. We did a you know uh, a promotion for end of last year, and one thing we did was uh, we offered we pimped me out and we offered us uh, some consulting calls if you bought the course for two thousand dollars. And you know I, I I did some consulting calls recently, and I spoke to somebody who had a really really great uh, idea, and she was selling um, some sort of she was a plastic surgeon and great product you know some sort of skincare stuff in LA and um, she she said to me she did some research on Greta and, and stuff and she actually bought Skinny VT and she said you know what Greta really walks the talk she said after I bought Skinny VT just out of the blue she, she they sent me like a 200 page like ebook on like living a healthy lifestyle how to use the tea all this stuff and she was just like, that was so good. Like I didn't even expect it. So you can see where I'm going, like that reciprocity. So in the next time around, like that just blew her away. So she said, now because she did that, I'm going to become a lifelong customer. Can you see like always surprising and delighting people when they don't even expect it and using the law of reciprocity to build a great brand can be incredibly powerful. Look at like what we're doing right now, guys. You didn't know what to expect. You might have thought we might do a couple of talks and you come here and we are absolutely blowing your minds with like, you know, we're working really hard to give you an amazing life-changing experience. So we try and do that with whatever we do, you know? And you know, that another way to build trust is also you know, using some virality or component of being recommended by a friend or you've heard good things. That's some of the best stuff, word of mouth. Um, you know, what does good design mean to me? Uh, so when someone looks at, this is, this is something that I think about when I think about our design and I work with Coran to put out stuff, is when someone looks at your marketing, like any collateral or anything you put out there, they have to take a second look. So it, maybe not a pattern interrupt, but they take a second look and be like, hmm, that's really cool. You know, it catches them. It's cool, it's, you know, the colors are loud, but subtle, it's cool, it's funky, it's fresh, it's minimal. I talked to you about minimal design. I'm really, a really big fan of minimalist design and the fonts are strong. Um, but yeah, the, the, the core underlying thing when I look at great design is that people have to take a second look. There's like, well, you know, it, you just can't, it's just not every stuff just passes you in the street, you know? Um, your branding assets, you guys know all this stuff, this is pretty basic stuff, but these are the things that I kind of focus on when it comes to building a picture of our brand. Our website, our social media, our free magnet, like our free stuff that we put out, our lead magnets, our products and services, and the logo. Uh, so here's your design toolbox. So I'm gonna share with you now how you guys can find great designers on a budget. Um, so this is the stuff that we've been doing since day one. So the best way I've found from my experience to find great designers is using two particular websites. Behance.net or Dribble.com. Is anyone familiar with yeah, those? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Behance, not Dribble. Yeah, yeah. So all the best designers, the best ones, they're really proud of their work. And this is basically your LinkedIn, Dribble or Behance is your LinkedIn for great designers to showcase their best work. So you can go on there, right? And you can run a search if you're on a budget. You can look for designers in Eastern Europe, like, you know, let's say, let's say, uh, you know, somewhere in Eastern Europe, like um, Croatia or you, and you could look for designers in the Philippines or India or some third world countries where you can get great design on a budget. And there are tons of incredibly talented people in third world countries that produce some of the most game changing stuff and they showcase their work because they're so proud of it. So I found the best designers hang out on dribble.com or behance.net and you can just reach out to them and you just got to go cold. Um, that's the way that I tend to go about it on a budget. You know, if you guys want to go down the love and money path, yeah, it's going to be boss, but... What does that generally run? Like, 
25k for a full-on logo site all that for, for what yeah yeah so i'm gonna say yeah like if you're gonna go down the love and money path yeah you'd be looking in the in the five figures to just get started you know what i mean so it just it just depends like how you want to play it you know some of you guys how that's much, not a lot of money but you know how much of a difference do you say would you say if you spent time and found a talented designer on, on behance like would you say that you can compete in terms of how well designed branded your site could look versus going with someone like love and money yeah 100 percent. but yeah. you have to remember it takes more time and you have to think of it as building a team is it where is the time at difference in that just searching well, for the person giving more direction you know with an agency they're going to do a lot of the direction right they're going to yeah. give you suggestions when you work with a freelancer or an agency overseas they're not going to be as consultative they're going to yeah. say what do you want give us some examples and I, think that, fit. I think that's a huge part because i know like for us like when we have dropped the money for it like i don't know i'm so indecisive i'm like i want this and then they'll literally just copy that brand and it looks so good but they just copy you know and that's and okay like, i think modeling is fine we do a lot of modeling where we can but we don't want to rip off so it's obvious yeah but we are constantly modeling concepts, ideas, strategies, everywhere. And, I, I, and you guys, I've told you this already, like, you know, the starting scale course, where did we get that idea from? I didn't come up with that, we looked at masterclass.com. You know what I mean? Like, we are constantly modeling, so that's okay to model, and it's okay if you want to spend, you know, go down the love and money path, but the main point I'm trying to make is you got to make that investment. Mm -hmm. So love and money is like a 25k thing. I, well, I, I don't know. Yeah, 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 like yeah ballpark. Yeah. You did, um, obviously Emily's brand, you didn't do that. You probably found someone like Behance or something like that. So for Emily, what yeah. That, what's something yep. like this cost? Yep, yeah. so great question. So, so with Emily's brand, we, I, I found, you know, uh, uh, somebody that was head of, ex-head of designs at 99 Designs. He was super talented. And um, I found him through networking. So similar kind of thing, you know, he was on Behance and, and Drill, but I found him through networking because we were looking at, at one point in time I was thinking that we needed a full-time designer, we don't, and we found a really good solution, but, um, you know, uh, he's done some work with us and um, he lives in Melbourne and what I paid him was like a few grand and he did the, the logo, the whole concept, the design. Do you do your site or, or just the designs? Just just the designs of the bottle, the logo, the concept. He did all that for a couple of grand. Oh, for the healthish? Yeah, for the oh, healthish. For health yeah. Okay. And then the website, Emily's just done that. So we're running it on budget. Like we've had, like like I said, healthish is not a big thing for me. Prefer I, me personally I prefer to spend that money elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I know I can, you know. So that's kind of the design toolbox and the resources that we use. You can use an Upwork, you can use a 99 Designs, but for you guys, I'd recommend, if you want to go down the freelancer path, go for the dribble.com or the Behance. Upwork's 20% now. Yeah, I haven't used it in a long time. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. All right, so this is the first issue of the magazine. This is the first issue of the magazine. What'd you go with? The 150 or the 400? So this is the, this is the 400. This is the Koran's first issue. Wait, what's the 150 or the 400? Mean? How much it cost? Remember I said there was two? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So so what'd you go with? The 400. So remember how I paid 150? That was my budget. And I had this shitty one designed. And then mm. Koran told me that story. Uh, he said, like, you know, you've got to place emphasis in design. And I ended up going down that path and choosing him. And this is the first issue that he pumped out. He's tight. And those so, two people bought that? <clears throat> In the first day, yeah, in the first day, yeah, yeah with the with the um, Superman front cover stock image. <laughs> but the reason that I the reason that I share this with you guys is still to this day you can see the look, the feel yeah. four or five years later, right? Yeah. Like, you know, so you can get great design at a budget. You know, now another thing that builds a great brand is an amazing product, um, and I'm very big on that. You can't. Polish a turd. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe to build something long term and sustainable, the product is it is it is necessary that you have a, a really compelling product. And you guys know this stuff, you're already doing it, right? So I'm not gonna go into that too much. Um, one thing that we've done is uh, we create a manifesto. Uh, I think it, we, we're actually going to update ours, mm -hmm. but um, 
I use that as a way to differentiate our brand around just giving a more human element to it. So a manifesto is kind of a body of work that really just showcases your beliefs, how you view the world, um, you know, where, you're, where, where our brand can take you. And I just thought it's a really cool, I got the idea from Seth Godin, um, creating a manifesto. And uh, it's just a really great branding piece. And I did that early on, in the very early days, very, very early days. And I, over 100,000 people have read that. And that would last, you know. So, you know, really just thinking about what, when you build a brand, what do you believe in? What do you want to stand for? Putting a stake in the ground, this is what the manifesto does. It puts a stake in the ground saying, this is who we are, this is what we believe in. So it's just something to think about. This is something we've done, which I believe every brand should have. Every brand should have a manifesto because it also encourages you to think about how you want to be perceived and how you know you want your prospective customers to think about you or your existing customers to think about you. Um, so you know you can put in your you know, the purpose of a manifesto is to put in you know what's important to you, your brand, your purpose, your intentions, your why, your opinions, your motives, your beliefs. And you can even be rebellious. You can use a manifesto as a way of a, starting a revolution. You know, um, I think we can do a better job at that, to be honest with Founder. And we will, when we start to put out this YouTube stuff, is we really want to create a, a feeling of, of movement. There's a movement taking place right now where, you know, 17-year-olds are, you know, not doing their schoolwork and working out online how to build a business. There's, a, there's something taking place right now and we want to be on the forefront of leading that and driving that. You see where I'm going with this? So when you can be rebellious and showing that like your mission and what you truly believe in so strongly, um, people want to get behind that. People want to follow it. And I think Russell Brunson's done a, a tremendous job of, of really starting a movement. And uh, we can do that. I think we can do a better job of that and we will. That's something to think about as well when it comes to building a brand and the story of what people talk about. Um, another thing that we've done very strategically and not, it all happened by accident, but once I worked it out, I've really doubled down on this, is aligning the founder brand with influencers and experts. So when you see anything founder or you go to anything founder, you're going to see Richard Branson, you're going to see Ariana Huffington, Tim Ferriss, Seth Godin, all everyone's favorite entrepreneurs, you know, they've been on the front covers, they've given us testimonials, and that's what builds trust. You know, so you can build a brand from aligning yourself with big time influencers. Whether they use your product, whether they give you a testimonial or a recommendation, it's incredibly powerful to build trust. And that's what I obsess about. How can we build ridiculous amounts of trust, respect, rapport, excitement, great design, it gets you excited. And that's what I want to really instill in somebody when they see anything that we put out from Founder. How can we get someone super pumped? When somebody first finds Founder, like a cold prospect, never heard of us, some people get so insanely pumped. And that's what we want to keep replicating. And they go out and become an advocate for our brand, right? And we can do more stuff of fueling that. But, you know, a big part of it is aligning ourselves with influencers. So, Justin, you said to me the other night, like, why do you still publish the magazine when, you know, the majority of our revenue is coming from courses? Because we get to align ourselves with influencers and still build the brand. And you don't have to publish a magazine, though. The key takeaway I want you guys to have is you don't have to publish a magazine to align yourself with influencers. You know, just like we do with Emily's bottle, you know, we got you know, someone from The Bachelorette to use the product, take a photo with it. We're going to blast it everywhere to any, anyone in Australia that's going to know her. You see what I'm saying? You know, the same with like High Smile, where they work with Kylie Jenner. They use that in all of their marketing because it builds so much trust. You, you're going to choose a teeth whitening brand that, you know, Kylie Jenner's used versus a teeth whitening brand that... You don't know, you never heard of them, you don't know who they are. Like, you know, you, you see where I'm going with this, right? Where you can really align yourself with influencers. And that's one of my, another key pieces. I've got, you know, three or four things that I always focus on when it comes to building a brand. Great product, impeccable design, and aligning yourself with influencers. Or having some form of sponsors or ambassadors for your product. You know, I would just encourage, you know, where you guys can, 
team up with other brands to get that cross-pollination. Like, you know, let's say you had an eye, you still had your eyelash company, Urban Lash. I think it would be killer if you guys did a deal with High Smile where you did a big thing together, mm -hmm. you know, because they've got a great brand and you can align yourself alongside them. Doing that kind of stuff is just really a good practice for brand building. Um, like, I'll give you an example. We never went, we still haven't gone through with it, but WeWork. WeWork's got a great brand. They wanted to do some stuff with us. Um, that kind of stuff, where you can, collaborate. Um, another thing I, I think about as well, and you know, you guys know this, but your network is your net worth. So I place an incredible amount of, uh, I guess, time in building my network. And even from Melbourne, I know some of the biggest people in our space. I'm friends with so many. I've got, I've got an incredible network and I've deliberately, you know, always trying to help people however I can. You know, I, I, we will help anyone that we can to build, and I will, to build our network and constantly, you know, keep you know, building that network to do deals, to do biz dev, to do partnerships, to do branding stuff. So like, you know, digital marketer, they're gonna take us through their whole email marketing strategy with me and Jesse in a couple of weeks now, in return, um, that's gonna help us. Uh, you know, all these kinds of things, that's what I really encourage you guys to think about as well. And yeah, I, I talked about this here, serve first and ask later. When it comes to networking, always see how you can provide value to that person and not expect anything in return. That's how I'm able to get you know, droves of my friends, specific friends that have big e-commerce businesses for you guys, to come and you know, just dedicate their time in you with two weeks notice. Um, because you know, I, I've always, I'm always serving first and asking later and it brings you know, a certain amount of leverage. So when it comes to networking, I know you guys know this, but it's something I, I pay a lot of attention to. Um, so th here's some ways that you can serve first and ask later and do networking and, and build up your network and build up potential partners in your space, um, even in the health and beauty industry, if that's a place that you guys want to tackle, you can definitely start to build up, and you guys are already doing it, right? But you know, purchase, purchase that person's products or services. Offer to help and not expect anything in return. Comment on their blog post, letting them know if you find a typo in their copy. If you see them doing something wrong, let them know there is a better way or feature them on your podcast, blog or magazine. So this was relevant to Chris Ducker's you know, mainly digital product audience. Um, building influence is another thing that we place a lot of attention on. I told you guys about the book. I really like that book. Um, but this is a principle that I was told uh, by Ed Dale, and it was actually really, really smart. I really want to um, share this one with you guys. I think it's really powerful when it comes to building a brand, and it is coming true, and this is what I was told five years ago. You will know when you are an influencer or in the top 10, inf you're one of the top 10 influencers in your industry if all of your competitors know who you are have reached out to you and want to collaborate with you. You should use that as your gauge. Who's the, who's the who in the zoo for you guys right now? And the day that most of them, seven out of 10 of them have come to you and want to do something like a digital marketer or you know sumo.com or success magazine that want to do a partnership, that's when you know you are building true influence and that's a measurement that you're building the brand that you need to build. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. That's something to really think about. And I, when you go on this brand building, you know, quest of when you're building a brand, always keep that in, your, in the back of your mind of where, how you're progressing. Who knows about us? Who's asking us for help? Who wants to collaborate? Who are the who's who in the zoo? Really know your space better than anyone. Um, so, Here's some influence building tactics. There's something that I want to share with you guys that I think is incredibly powerful that um, sometimes is, is blatantly obvious, but a lot of people just don't do it. And that is just consistency with whatever it is you're putting out. So the, the, the magazine, founder, the founder magazine, we have published a new issue the middle of every month the past five years. Joe doesn't miss a shipping date. I only missed one, I was only six weeks behind, we, missed, we were two weeks behind only when we were sued for trademark infringement. But we have a shipping habit and consistency is what builds influence. Whatever that content channel is that you're putting out, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you have to build these habits of putting out content. 
You know, you look at Gary Vee, right? The reason that he has so much influence is because he puts out so much content consistently, relentlessly, aggressively, and he just, just builds so much influence. So the influence game is content at scale, consistently, for a long period of time. That's all it is, and that's all we will do with Founder, but we'll keep adding to it. So we started with the magazine, monthly magazine. Then we started with the podcast, weekly podcast. Then we started with the blog post. And then soon we'll start with the YouTube channel. You see how I go, the weekly YouTube. You say, and then we'll keep adding more elements to it. You know, then we'll start, and soon we'll be the courses. You'll get a new course in Founder Premium once we launch this platform every single month. Then it'll be two courses every single month or three. And you can see that consistency. If you can do that with your content, it's incredibly powerful. And that's how you build an influential brand whether it's personal brand or business brand. Very, very powerful. Um, you wanna be producing cool stuff for your market and niche every single day where you can. That's how you build a brand. Giving, 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 giving. Law of reciprocity, not expecting anything in return. Yes, we are a content-based business, so I don't expect you guys as a product-based business to do as much content as we do, but if you're a $50 million company, I would expect that for sure, 100%. So you have to be prepared to, you know, even just starting small, start with one channel, whatever that channel is, I don't know, maybe probably your blog would be probably one of the best ones. You know, you look at Shopify, they give so much good stuff. Like they've got an incredible brand, but the amount of content, and Dave's mentioned this before, the amount of stuff they give is just so good and it's just so consistent and they just don't stop. And they're constantly putting out more shit. To, it's really good. Um, partnerships and collaborations with other brands and influencers in your audience, I talked about that. Getting featured in the media, where you can, getting, getting that PR, like you know, we are a media company so it doesn't matter, but getting that media um, on podcasts, blogs, or you know, industry blogs, getting that and building up that book is incredibly powerful to build influence and using it. Um, you know, producing a book or a magazine, we've found that to be true, that you can build influence. My friend Jake, I'm not, I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm not suggesting this for a physical product, but my friend Jake actually, you know, inspired by us, he launched a coffee table book, it's doing quite well, you can ask him about it later. How are we doing for time, Dave? We're good. Okay. Um, you know, speaking of conferences, talks, that's for your personal brand, that's more relevant to Chris Ducker's audience if they want to build a personal brand. Um, I talked to you about the ultimate influence test, you know, if 10, if 10 out of the 20 top influencers in your niche read your stuff or have collaborated with you, you have built an influential brand in your market. You're in the top. And that's what you need to think about. That's what you need, that's your gauge, that's your measurement that you guys need to carry with you for you to build a big brand, a great brand. Um, another thing we do as well is we move the free line. This is a concept from Eben, Eben Pagan, where I talked to you about the law of reciprocity. We try and give away some of our best stuff for free and I think, I, I personally believe as physical product businesses, you guys can do some incredible free eBooks and stuff, exactly like what Greta's doing. It doesn't cost you much, and would just build so much brand loyalty and just bring so many people into your world. I don't know if you guys do that now, but you could really kill that, I'm sure. Like, just give me away just, just incredible stuff. I don't know if you guys have played around with free plus shipping offers as well. Like, Still like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, so like, where you can, I, I, I'm really big. Fan, I'm a really big fan of giving things away for free that people, not every day, every, people would be prepared to pay for to just blow people away. We do that in a big way with Founder. Not that relevant to you guys, but could be something that could be implemented in a big way. Like you know, for the Richard Branson issue, we give. We I decided that we should give that away for free everywhere for multiple reasons. You guys now know why. You know, not just the part of giving the magazine away for free, but also the influence building. And the trust, the rapport, the feel, everything. Um, you know, with Instagram, we've done some really cool stuff to sell our course and put out a ton of free content. I'm not going to talk about that, it's not so much relevant. The Oprah strategy, not so much relevant to you guys either, but something to think about. The reason, do you guys know the reason why Oprah is famous? Her story? What about her story? She was rising up as a powerful black woman and an oppressed. Woman. Yes, yes, that's part of it. But I believe, this is what I believe, Oprah 
started interview, interviewing successful people and having her on her show. And as time went on, people were more interested in actually what Oprah had to say versus what the successful celebrity had to say. Now, yeah, of course, her background and her story is a big part of it, but in terms of the strategy of building influence, that's what she did. Now, not as relevant to you guys, but that's something that we've done at Founder in a big way. A lot, but it comes back, like I said, aligning yourself to influences however you can. Um, you know, the podcast has been massive for us. Um, so here are the action items. Treat your brand like gold and act accordingly. Consider the design of all your marketing collateral. Look to build trust however you can from all the items mentioned. That one's not relevant. Interview other people. You could if you wanted. Uh, serve first and ask later. Align yourself with other influencers. Utilize case studies and testimonials for your brand. Give away your best stuff for free that you could usually charge for. Create a manifesto and look to build your network always. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. The Founder Mission is to help you create an ass-kicking business and help you learn straight from the mouths of world-class founders. Get your free printed edition of Founder Magazine featuring Sir Richard Branson. Just cover shipping and handling at founder.com forward slash Branson.